Welcome back to the Fighters Corner Podcast, guys. My name is John Graski, and with me is Mike Davis. Before we start the episode, I want to thank our show sponsor, the United Combat League. UCL MMA has been doing MMA shows across the Midwest for years and has been a pinnacle in local MMA for the Chicagoland area. Any interested in shows, tickets, or even combat opportunities, go to uclmma.com. And also, if you want to find us on Twitter, you can find us on Twitter as well at Fighters Corner Podcast. Uh, we'll take all the, actually, we'll block you with the complaints, but if you want to send <laughs> us over compliments and stuff like that, you know, we'll, 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 we'll be glad to listen to them. Anything you guys send over, we'll. We'll, we'll yeah, even sure ideas too. Like, if there's guys that you want us to try to interview for the show, I mean, we're always looking. I mean, I, this is really, really fun for us. It's become, a, you know, a really unique thing for, for for both of us, and we're having a lot of fun with it. So, um, on to the show. Uh, Mike and myself and Jonah, we were able to um, get the best American bare knuckle boxer on this planet right now. I, I you know, well, I mean. If- Alive. Well, it's called stratosphere. Yeah. I don't really like planet. I think, I think it, it, it extends. You know, it's galactic. The, the, the. Yeah. Yeah, we got Arnold Adams to sit in. Uh, we're fortunate enough that not only is he a local guy, he's fought for me in the past. And um, really it, fun guy, man. A real easy guy. And I think people are going to be talking about this one. Yeah, he's a big dude, man. Six foot four, 280 pounds, man. I mean, he just uh, just an intimidating figure, man. Um and he's legit. Yeah, not only is he legit, um, he he. It took him a minute to open up. I mean, I didn't shut up because I'm pretty amped about uh, you know Bernardo boxing. But once he got going, like um, the interview kind of took a life of its own. You know, and and if I may, there's a couple things that I that I I, I need to kind of clear the air on um, in regards to like the interview. All right. We get a little micro in regards to the local scene here because he was a part of it. And we get real 95% of the people that listen to this outside of this area are not going to know the names we're talking about. Just stick with the interview because we kind of come right, go back to uh, the international scene. And uh, there was also a time when um, in the interview where I couldn't recall somebody's name, the person's name, it's a female, um, and uh, she's from uh, Wells, and her name is Sammy Chisa, C-H-E-E-S-A. Sammy Chisa. I'm going to tell you this right now, man. The best hand wrapper I have ever seen in my entire life. You know, I, I just, I'd hate to, like, just not, not include her name in something, uh, especially as when she does such, like, an amazing job. Yeah. And then one last thing about Arnold Adams, too. I mean, right now he's he's the heavyweight champion for bare-knuckle boxing. Yeah, in the United States. In the United States. Yeah. And um, he's shelved a little bit, and he's He not, opens up. Yeah. No, no, he, he's been shelved as an athlete, as, yes. a, as a combatant. Yeah. And he's... Um, He's not happy about that. And, and and you might not catch that all too well in the podcast, but I will tell you this. Like, when it was over, and, you know, he stuck around for about an hour and a half, you know, he told me straight up, he's like, if I get a rematch with Shoemaker, he's like, I will end it in the first <laughs> round. Not that I could end it in the first round. He's like, I will end it yeah. in the first round. I'm like, jeez. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay, well, on to the interview. Uh, yeah, I thought it was real good. Yeah. Real good. Guys, like I said, please stick with it. You know, we talk about Europe. You know, we talk about local. You know, we, we, we go everywhere with it. So, please enjoy. Thanks, guys. When you talk about bare knuckle boxing in terms of people that have made a name for themselves, there's actually there's three definitive people. Two that have clearly defined themselves in terms of uh, a foundational substance that people look at and they say, oh, my God, 100%, there's something special here. The first one is a guy from Europe named Jimmy Sweeney. He's a three-time world champion in terms of uh, belts, uh, very accomplished, uh, fights with the uh, Bare Knuckle organization in Europe. And the second one is a guy sitting with us right now, Arnold Adams. If you were to make a point... Without a question of a doubt, of a definitive champion, we have him sitting across from us right now. Heavyweight champion Arnold Adams. What's up, brother? Welcome. What's going on, man? Thank you. Yeah. So, Arnold, you okay. got into MMA in about 2008. That was your first time uh, in combat sports. Did you have any amateur boxing background at all? No. See, this is where I kind of get perplexed. And, and you know, we're going to go right into the meat of this situation because you started MMA in 2008. That's kind of like when... it. Was it hot? Yeah. You know, it was kind of yeah. like, 
you know, the oh shit factor was there, and everyone was was kind of into it. And, and was uh, too. what's Tough, that? The Ultimate Fighter was big when I started too. That's kind of what got me into it. Okay, and you ran into a rough patch because it seemed like you were just one of these crazy dudes that went in there. Yeah. Not I, really caring. Just I watched me go hurt somebody. <laughs> <laughs> you, you had a beat up record and then it seems like you kind of figured out that you actually had to learn a little bit. Yeah. And then you went on a tear. I'd say your first ten fights probably don't count. If it was up to me they wouldn't count, but you know, they they're there. So Yeah, but I mean that's it is what it is. You know what I mean? Like you were just a kind of guy getting a rush. Right. And then well, I, I, how did you kind of go into and figure out that uh, bare knuckle boxing or even boxing was the sport for you that you'd, you'd really advance at it? Well, in my, in my MMA fights, my stand up game has always been up to par. I've always had hands, you know, I can kick and I can compete with the best, but. You had issues with wrestling. Yeah. Even though I wrestled in high school, I loved wrestling in high school, but once I got to the D1 wrestlers and the, the diehard wrestlers, <laughs> yeah. And I was like, you know what? These guys are they're stronger and they're relentless. So let, let's let's try to. Uh... It's a different level. Yeah. Yeah. No. 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 For sure. So when I watched when I heard that you were entering the bare knuckle um, tournament, I remember talking to a couple guys, and I, I said to myself, I go, wait a minute, man. You're really fast <laughs> for a big guy. <laughs> Like, you legitimately are. Like, yeah. you, you fight like a 155-pounder with your hands. I hear that all the time. Yeah, yeah and you know what? And, and because you're so fast, you're able to... to I'm not, I don't want to say the word sloppy because that's not, that's, not, that's not it. You're allowed to kind of get away with more than you're supposed to. I'm allowed, I get away with being like a days ago. 100%. Mm-hmm. Like, when I, when I come out, people don't think I can fight. I'm, I'm, well, your hands are low, you but know, you stay small. And you stay committed. I do. See, I, like, like when you actually look at boxing, when people go back and forth, back and forth, it's not a good way of fighting unless you've got just like rocket speed to where you go left and right and you stay small and you go forward, middle, forward, middle. You don't see that in heavyweight boxing, <laughs> even on a professional level. Oh, this is good. Right or wrong? Yeah, yeah. 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 So where does that come from? I study. I studied. Okay, now, now, wait. Could you shut up for a couple seconds, Arnold? You really, you're, you're talking way too much. So when they announce Arnold Adams' nickname... What is it, by the way? Okay. Boumaye. What? What? Boumaye. Okay, now, wait a minute. <laughs> well, let me tell you, we're pointing at a Muhammad Ali book. Okay, so when you talk to people that really know the fight game, like when you talk to, like, a Montel Griffin, you talk to a Floyd Patterson, when you talk to even Roy Jones Jr., like, you sit there and they'll go... Yeah, man, in the 1920s, there's this guy, Pat Fitz, you know, Fitz, Fitzgerald, that was a bare-knuckle boxer that did this, this, this. And they really, there was this guy, Harry Greb, and they talk about, like, these really hard-to-find guys, but they talk about them with such, like, intimacy, like, they got so addicted to the sport that they just went down this path. And when they announce your name, boom, I, I go, wait a minute. <laughs> we got one. We got one. Okay. So what was Muhammad Ali's influence with you um, his swag, just the just the way he carried himself on. I mean, in and out the ring. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the way he can get in his opponent, he can get in his opponent's head, but before they even get into the fight. And then I saw the whole rumble in the jungle and the Ali Boumaye, and so you grew up a student of the game. Yes, I, let's not say I grew up a student. Um. Once I got into the combat sports, that's when I really started to study. Hey, it's crazy. It kind of makes, it takes you down like this rabbit hole where you're just like, man, if you're picking up Boomaye, that means you're watching fights that are 20 years old going, hold up, guys, give me a minute. Let me just get through this. I'm on like round five right now. <laughs> it's like people don't do that unless, no, right. you I, know? Yeah, I, I do do that. <laughs> it, absolutely. <laughs> you didn't have to say that. I knew it. <laughs> it, it, it bugs people because I, wait a minute, let me let me finish this. And then I'll cough. I'll, Whatever you need, I got you. But let me finish what I'm doing right now. Let me get these notes in. Yeah, okay. Um, now, in regards to yourself, um, let's talk about your strengths. What, I want to know what you think your strengths are. Uh, my counter ability. 
Like I'm, I'm a counterfighter, you know, and it, it shows. But okay, but but you also lead, like you make, you give like little feints, and you make them come. Like, dude, you're yeah, a counterfighter like, that walks forward, bro. That, that's like <laughs> I study Floyd too, though. If you if you watch Floyd, he leans forward, he's open. It, it, it to your to my opponent, it looks like I can be touched. It looks like oh, I can get to him, and then uh-huh. as soon as I see a, a shoulder flinch or a, a step come forward, okay, now you're coming. Now here we go. And you're walking forward. Dude, this guy walks forward and counters. Do you know who yeah. does that? 170 pounders. Yeah. That's who does that, dude. I mean, but most heavyweights are slow. Big time. Big time. I'd say like a, like a 205 pounder. If they go up to heavyweight, they actually fare better most of the time. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. they're a little more athletic. Mm-hmm. Little Arnold, Arnold, what do you walk around at? I'm probably about 280 right now. 280? So... Obviously, you fought MMA, so you make that cut fairly easy than the two sixty five. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, and, then, and what about like with bare knuckle boxing? They just say anything over two hundred, you're good. No, two sixty five is two sixty five. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, they're actually pretty good with that. Okay, yeah. they're actually pretty good with that. Oh, yeah. All right, so your counter ability. That's that's. See, Arnold's got this thing where it's, it's a classic boxing move where somebody will throw a jab, and he's so friggin' quick. But the only way you can pull it off is if like. Uh, you're pretty technical. And what he does is he follows the jab back with his right hand, and it's just a straight right, and he blasts it. And you probably land that two, three times around. That sounds scary. It's a free punch, dude, and he gets it every single time. <laughs> and I can tell you what he needs to work on. Like, dude, I, I, mean, I'm, on, I haven't on. shut up since this fucking thing went on, and I, I, it's probably not going to stop, <laughs> unfortunately. Uh <sighs> There's a move in bare knuckle boxing that you don't see in boxing, but you can't really get away with it. And essentially, when someone throws a, a, a lazy punch, you try to same side push it to the opposite hip, and it turns their body. And Arnold almost got that against Joey Beltran about three or four times, but he really wasn't committing to it. But I know he was going for it, and it's a super old school move, bro. Describe that again. You throw a jab. Look at me. Okay. I'm taking my hand. And I'm pushing it towards oh, yeah. your opposite oh, yeah. hip, oh, yeah. and I'm turning your 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 essentially I'm turning your yeah. body mm-hmm. towards me, and you're using and and you're coming with the opposite hand. It's mm-hmm. like it's oh, a slap yeah. move, <laughs> and you almost hit that thing two or three times in the second round. And I'm like, the minute you pull that off, I think people are going to be foolish not to do it, but they don't have the hand speed that you they do. They don't. No, you have the hand speed, the hand eye coordination, like it's. It's a lot to it. It's a it's a combination of things that you got to put together at the same time. All right, tell us about the tournament that you were in. I mean, I've, I got to be quiet. Um, <clears throat> well, I originally got an invite from Nate Shook to come to the tryout in Philly. Uh huh. Um, summer 2017. Went, did my tryout. Got a call about a year later. We got a tournament going. You're in. First fight's June second. So they had tryouts an entire year before their first event. Yeah. Yeah, they wow. were filming for bare knuckle. For yeah, bare right? knuckle, okay. yeah, yeah. they were filming a pilot for um, <clears throat> a bare knuckle reality TV show that day. Um, and while he was still trying to get his commissions, you know, to approve the states to approve the fight, he was keeping in contact with me. Mister Feldman kept in contact mm-hmm. with me, let me know what was going on. I didn't think it was going to be a year, but it, it was. And I thought it. I didn't think it was going to happen. To be honest. Yeah, no, no, no. It's been an uphill battle uh, for bare knuckle boxing here in the states for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But I mean, uh, he's got it now, and he's he's on the rise. Yeah, his moves are. Um, I see the path that he's taking, and um, he's going to pull it off. Yeah. Like he, it, it looks like it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the signings and stuff like that. that I, he's making. I think I think once he makes it to Nevada and California, I think that Nevada is oh, going to be a fortune. But I'm saying that's the thing. Yeah. You know, that's the thing. As soon as he gets. That's, I think it's Nevada. years from now. It, it, whether he, it's years or clean, months, man. But he's going to clean up on the flyover states yeah. before that's, it gets that's I, think, I think it'll probably be a year. Wow. I'm going to give it a year. Because he's. In, in the shows, the doctors are they're on point. And that's what the commission wants to see. They want to see are, are these guys really getting bruised and battered? And is the doctor there to make sure everything is okay? I think he, I think once he gets Florida, he'll get Florida. Before, like, I think Florida and Texas would be the first two major states. Uh, New Jersey, they will get everyone except New York and Nevada. See, do you want to fight in Florida? I mean, like, how many big time <laughs> was it like the news stories? No, I mean, just, no, 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 not, not just not it's the news white stories. Trash just, there, bro. I mean, like, you don't see you don't see a lot of MMA events even through like the UFC fighting. In, that is in, true, right? I mean, like, hey, but it is a big market, though. I mean, it's you know, it's like all the know. Cubans and the Latins there. I mean, yeah. it is yeah. a big boxing a market. Of, a boxing, a I'd say. Yeah. 
Boxing, I'd say, but like MMA, I don't know if they have finding a lot of success in, in Florida. But boxing, I can see. Yeah. I would just with the with the culture that's on there with the Cubans and, mm-hmm. and, and, and everyone else. But yeah, I get boxing for sure. All right, so let's talk about the tournament. First okay. opponent, go ahead, Arnold. Who was First it? opponent, uh, DJ Linderman. Okay, now, were you nervous he's, going he's into that? He's smiling, fight? so I already know how that was going. Yeah. Yeah. So. Nervous? No. No, but I mean, I was weary because he was a vet, you know. He, hey, dude, he was slick, man. Like, he wasn't in great shape. He was obviously a little past his prime. I mean, but he's three years older than me. Really? Yes. <clears throat> and he he looks like... You don't party much, though, do you? I don't. I, I did as 19, 20, 21, and I was a bouncer for 10 years in the club, so... so you kind of went through that phase. Yeah, yeah it doesn't yeah. interest you. It yeah. doesn't. No, I'm not a big drinker. Okay, so when he fought D, uh, DJ Linderman, uh, absolute veteran, um, where I think you you capitalized on that fight was your dirty boxing. Yep, you wrecked him. It was like a, like almost like a half Muay Thai clinch, mm-hmm. and uh, he was using shoulder rolls uh, to block the punches, and then really countering with uppercuts and, and hooks. Yeah, no, it was impressive. So you got past DJ Linderman, and how that how that fight end? Doctor stoppage after the second round. You yeah. start slow though. There you go. I do. But like, and that's been years. I feel like I have to get hit a couple times. Like he he landed a nice three punch combo, big time, right off the bat. I mean, it was a basic one, two, three, and it landed perfectly. Like, boom, boom, boom. And I you woke up. You're like, okay, like, oh, all right, this is actually fight now. Yeah, if you thought about maybe getting a round or two in in the locker room before you go out there, that might work. But then the timing is always off with that. You know, you cool off back there waiting for so you have like a blanket on, man. You know. Porter had that on yesterday, and I, yeah. I, 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 I took notes on that. I was like, "That's smart. That keeps him warm yeah. until he gets into the ring." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, yeah, now you also seem really relaxed. Uh, you're not really holding your breath much. A lot of times, fighters do that. Like they'll do upper respiratory breaths, mm-hmm. and they're holding it, and they kind of fade because of mm-hmm. that. You don't have any issues going long rounds either, do you? It depends on the opponent. That's it. It just depends on the opponent. If you didn't have it, any issues against no, Linderman, no, 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 no. no. You, I mean, you could have stood it between rounds. I, but that's that was on the promotion and I think Fight TV. That was all on them. That they pumped DJ up. They gassed him up before the fight. I didn't know who he was, so I did my research. I saw he fought um, Rumble Johnson. You know, he was he did all these. Let me, I do, let me tell you something, man. You could sit here and throw all these big names. All that means is just like you almost died that night. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <what> I mean? <laughs> That's what happened. When yeah, hell yeah, dude! I fought Angel Man Freddy when I was like seventeen. Oh. And, uh, believe me, they, do I need to say what happened? <laughs> well, I mean, it was—I don't know. I I stick to the game plan no matter what. That's my thing. I'm gonna stick to the game. I don't care what you do to me or how many punches you land, how many times I miss. I'm gonna stick to my bread and butter, and it's gonna work. Eventually, it's gonna work. Yeah, no, no, no. It certainly paid off in that. And, you know, in tournament style too. Like what? Uh, my concern. Uh, for you or anybody going into the tournament is that, like, you know, it's a four-man tournament. You've got to fight twice. Like, you got to... When a sport is so new, uh, you know, people have a misconception of, oh, man, man, if I hit him as hard as I can, I can knock him out. That, that's the fastest way to exit a tournament mm-hmm. in bare-knuckle boxing. Mm-hmm. You know, you go 100% to the body, but, you know, the face, you just got to touch, you man. You got to touch. You have to touch. Yeah, it's actually a lot safer game. than... I yeah. played a cut game. Yeah. I'm not, why Why risk breaking my hand on your hard head? And I, I really found that out when I fought um, Beltrain. He has a hard head. Dude, and you know, he doesn't cut easy either. And you know, he, and he although he had a lot of cuts, <laughs> he doesn't. Like, he's got like the the, the cheap, like the perfect that, cheekbones yeah, and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, but he fought, uh, he fought Tony Lopez. And it was like. These guys have fought like I'm gonna exaggerate here, 15 times, right. and it's gone like 50 percent each way. Like they're the perfect matchup, and it was one of the most brutal fights. Mm-hmm. It's probably one of the most brutal fights that you can actually watch. I mean, it's you're just gonna be yelling at the TV while watching it. And when I saw that, I'm like, holy shit! Like there ain't no way this guy's coming out for. A second fight. Right, right. I Were mean, you surprised when he was walking into that ring? I wasn't. Um, what? I mean, you know, we're, we're warriors. He's a warrior. He's a, he's a, a serious vet. The Lopez and Beltran are, you know, they've been around for, what, 15, 20 years? All you got to do is look at Lopez's face and mm-hmm. just go, man, dude, this dude's been in a, 
a few fights. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I always fell out of a tree, yeah. hit a couple cactuses on the way down. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was surprised. I, I thought, I thought, did they have an alternative that night? An uh, alternate? Rico Rodriguez. I think Rico Rodriguez. Really? The UFC. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Champion. No, yeah he was Rico. the alternate belt. Yeah, but his fight was a dud that night. So they instantly, you know what? You're done with the tournament. Well, bring in Bell Train now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was wild. Oh, Rico Rodriguez, man. That's he, like a name you don't hear. Yeah, you know, he, he's actually got a bunch of wins. And, I mean, I don't know what his record looks like now, but I know he had like 15 wins in a row at one time. And mm-hmm. I, 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 I thought the UFC was going to pick him up again for a second round, but they never did. Yeah, no. All right, so then he fought Joey Beltran. Mm-hmm. And uh, were you surprised at that outcome? No. Man, dude, you, you got that reach, too. No. Yeah, yeah. And I Was I, it like 82 inches? It's 80. Is it 80? I, just, I officially found out. The third round of the tournament, my reach is 80 inches. That's actually what you refer to as championship length. Really? 100%, dude. Okay. 100%. And then you fought Sam Shoemaker the next event in the finals. Correct. Okay. Yeah. Um, I had I had my game plan for that, but uh-huh. I didn't want to get caught with his power, so I kind of I played the more technical side and... and didn't jump on him how I wanted to. Okay. Now, have you, uh, did you watch the last event where Sam fought? I tried to, the, the signal kept dropping. So I just said, forget it. I'll hopefully I'll catch a replay or something, but no, I didn't. But I do know he should have dropped that guy. I'm going to be real honest with you. He didn't look too impressive. Sam? Yeah. yeah. I, Sam's not a boxer. In my eyes, he's not a boxer. They say he's a boxer. You know, he's got five or six. He's 5-0, and oh, whatever his record is. He's done bare-knuckle boxing, and, but his it shows in the ring. Aside from that one knockout he had uh, against Prindle in the first round of the tournament. Which, well, I mean, Prindle's no punk, man. Yeah, no. I was like, whoa, what yeah. happened? Yeah. He, he fired an overhand right from out of nowhere, and it just it, it landed. And you can see his reaction. He was like, he looked and paused and was shocked and then went and celebrated. Like, he didn't he didn't think he was going to do that. All right. So, so, I mean, dude, I, I'm, like, I, I'm not trying. I mean, he, he, might, he, might, he knows what's coming free. right here. So, essentially, this is what happens. Arnold Adams fights in two different bare-knuckle organizations in the United States. Am I correct or is it just one? Just one. Was it just one? Just one. Just okay. the BKFC. I, I apologize. That's all right. He, for sure. He is the best heavyweight in the United States right now. There is no question in regards to that. I'll be as bold as to say the world because I've seen <laughs> some of the bare knuckle guys over in, in we'll, England. We'll and, talk about oh, that. Right, we'll right, talk right, about right. that. Yeah, I tell you what, man. Those guys over in Europe, believe it or not, man, they run a real classy organization over there. Uh, phenomenal crew of guys, um, but they do. They, they they have a real good organization, but. Then the last, uh, was it the last event took place in Cancun, Mexico? Mm-hmm. Okay, I attended that one. Okay. The entire tournament essentially is there, mm-hmm. except you. Except me. Okay. Mm. You don't like Cancun or what? Mm. No, it was just... I never received that phone call. Oh, really? I okay. thought you were like one of those Trump guys or something like that. I can't let him over here. I can't let him over here. Yeah. Ain't it? <laughs> did, did they have any heavyweights on that card? Dude, they yeah. had Tony Lopez and Beltran rematch. Oh, yeah. They had Shoemaker versus a local guy. They had the whole friggin' tournament except their champion. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. Thoughts on that? Yeah. I mean, you know, I have my thoughts. You know, it you it keep... bothered me. I didn't even get a call. Like, at least give me the option to turn it down. I mean, I am a champ. I, I mean, I have to fight, but you know, bring me out. Why not bring me out? I can, yeah, I'm going to tell you this right now, man. They're going to have issues finding anybody for him. 100%. That, that, that want to fight him? Well, I think right now they're going to be able to find people that want to fight him. They, they do. They're going to be. I mean, I yeah, mean, yeah, who, doesn't want, who doesn't want a belt? Right. However, hmm. I think after two or three events, I think. Uh, I think you're going to definitively see how dominant how Arnold Adams is. I, 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 because he's only fought, you fought, what, three times? Three times. Okay, he's only fought three times. So people don't, you know, there's not a lot of footage on him. So the guys in Europe, uh, 
the one benefit that they have is that Joe Brown and Jane, Jim Freeman Dove, they do events, like they do a lot of events. And their, their divisions are a lot more defined than we have here in the United States because we just don't have as many events. Right. And when you got guys like Harry Miles, um, I know, you know, a local guy, Josh Burns, had fought, uh, Mickey Terrell, um, those guys are friggin' good, man. Like, they, they legitimately good. They use their length. I'm going to be honest with you, I think you'd have more issues with them than you would some of the American fighters. Because they've been doing it longer over there. It, they're gypsies. It's a way of life. <laughs> I mean, they are. They're, I mean, it's... All you gotta do is look at their nickname. I mean, he can say, "Oh, you're not supposed to use gypsy, dude." It's in his freaking nickname. Right. You know, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Right. <laughs> he like, he like appears Bobby to be Gunn. okay with it. <laughs> Bobby Gunn calls himself the original Gypsy King or the oh. Gypsy King. Okay. That's what he calls. Him. Why aren't you fighting him? Me and Bobby became friends. Hey, so oh, so, so I mean, been I know, I know, like I know. And, uh, it's, it's, it's a business, and yeah, but you don't think that's a big payday? It probably would be, but probably. I, like what? You what mean, justice does that do for me? You want me to start some shit for you? I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. for you. Just give us a <laughs> I thought about it, and everybody's been asking. I want to see you fight Gun, you versus Gun. But what does it do for me? I beat Bobby Gun, but he's not a heavyweight anymore. He, I think he's five ten. That's not it. That's what's he weighing in now? He's like one eighty, one ninety. Oh jeez. No, he's yeah, he's yeah, he's been. It. But he's he's fought heavyweight. Has he has he? the first round of tournament. He was heavyweight. And I mean, I mean that's where I'm getting. I mean, he was like two most times of his fights. 15. Yeah, most of his fights were at heavyweight, but he's been dropping. Ever since the BKFC came into play, that's it. Then. He was like, "I'm going to drop weight. I'm getting away from this the heavyweight." Division. Well, I, it makes sense because, like, if 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 you're the only one really in the heavyweight division, I mean, you figure you don't have to cut. Worry about cutting weight. You know what I mean? Like, who else is going to challenge you in that division? So in June, I guess they're going back to uh, Cheyenne. Yeah, is it Cheyenne or Cheyenne, is it going to be Wyoming? Okay, have you? <gasps> No, I'm uh, sorry. It's Biloxi. It's yeah, they're going back to Biloxi. Is it Biloxi? Biloxi? Okay, yeah. and they're saying Paulie Malnagi is going to be on the card. Yeah, he just signed on. Now. He, 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 he keeps calling out Conor McGregor like it's going to do something. You know, man, he's salty well, as fuck. He, dude's driving a salt truck, man. Conor, <laughs> <gotta, he's, laughs> Conor's a fan. Is of he the really? Sport. Why? He, you know what? He, he, he really supports Beck Rollins. Really? Oh, wow! He, I tell you, the smart thing for for Malnagi to do fight Lubov. That's what everybody's been calling for. It'd be the smartest thing you can do. I'm, I'm not sure that they're the same weight class. Malinaji's going to have to move up. How but, far of a drive is Biloxi from here? It's what? like 30 hours. 30? Come on. Yeah. Biloxi, Mississippi, not Biloxi, China. Yeah. I believe it's... It's a long 13? friggin' drive. It's got to be less than you. Jonah, what is it? Fuck. I'd say 13. 13? Okay. Okay. Really? Dude, it's like, it's like 13 to New Orleans from Chicago. Uh, dude, I got a four-cylinder. You got a four-cylinder. I'm trying to make my... Yeah, I'm trying not to be wrong, you know? I got a three-cylinder car, bro. It's 30 hours. It's an hour from New Orleans. It's not from... Okay, so yeah, maybe 13 hours. Or close to 13 hours. I wouldn't mind taking that road trip. Fuck it. Yeah, no, for sure. So who do you want, dude? I mean, what the fuck? You're sitting here with two freaking I mean, belts. What, what do you want? Ex- I, I put out an open invitation. I am now accepting challenges. I guess you don't really have to call anybody. You know what that no, means? Yeah, it's just, you, you just... <laughs> like, I'm I'm Adams. Yeah. Who do you want to call out? You're the most decorated American. No, he, can, he, can, he can just coast right now. <laughs> right, right. That's pretty much what it is. And, you know, when they find somebody or they think they got somebody who can come take the belts, you know, I'm here for it. Uh, I remember when... David had posted, like, huge announcement coming up, you know, major signee. So I commented on the post, like, uh, is there someone that can come take these belts from me? <laughs> Never got a response. No, I, no, no, I, I got to tell you another thing, dude. Like, this guy, he, he did a Ric Flair strut when he won the tournament. <laughs> Who, this guy? Oh, hell yeah, he did, dude. And, and he didn't fake it. He did it a couple times just after so people <laughs> knew he was playing. After every fight, that's what it was, a Ric Flair strut. Yeah. Right, so God, this, this, is, this is what we're going to do. All right. You, you should, you, what you got to do is you got to go to Thailand. Okay. And in Thailand, you can have, like, suits made. Like, you can have, like, $3,000 suits made for, like, three three hundred fifty bucks. You need to get a suit with feathers on it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you need to go Tar Heel Blue suit with some feathers on it. <laughs> custom fit. You know what I mean? Okay. <laughs> Come out with it. Hell yeah, bro. Definitely. Come you know, zip away yeah. arms so you can get your gloves on. Oh, right. There ain't no gloves. What? Right, man. Right now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. No. That's good, man. That's that's real good. Um. So, I, last night, uh, we, did you guys watch the PBC fights? The only one I caught was main event. Yeah, Sean Porter event. versus Ugas. Great fight. 
Man. It was good, huh? Great I liked it. fight. I haven't seen a fight of that caliber in a while. All right, now this is what's crazy. We were trying to look up odds for the fight. John, what did we find? Nothing. And you and you kept telling me. You're like, I'll find him, I'll find him. I'm like, there was nothing to find. There's nothing no, nowhere. No, nothing no, in Vegas. See, when you got... Here's no no one would do it because they thought it was just gonna be such a blowout. Here here's the thing. The Cuban boxing system is this. Yo, hey Arnold Adams, you're like, you know, seven, eight years old, you're a big kid, you like to, you're not afraid to scrap. We're gonna put you in boxing and you're gonna go live there. Mm-hmm. Say goodbye to your parents. Now, you don't have a choice time. either, you know. No, That's what no. uh, you want one meal a day or you want two. You want two meals, you better work extra hard mm-hmm. because King there's Kong. a tear. Who's that? Um you talking about Romero? No. He's you a heavyweight. Want? Oh, Ortiz. Ortiz. Yeah. That he, in oh, his story, yeah. he okay. talked about that. The greatest trainer in all of boxing right now is living in Cuba. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you can sit here and say, you go, oh, we got Freddie Roach, we got this, we got that. Uh-uh. The island of Cuba, they have a, a, a system there, and it is no joke, man. And when you got a guy like Sean Porter that's super elusive and super fast... Dude, you got a friggin' Cuban across from you? Mm-hmm. With like, length? You look, with with oh, dude, you ain't got length. You ain't, you ain't got length. You ain't eating, bro. <laughs> you better you put a sparring on. partner in Cuba. You better reach that right. table and hit that rice bowl, yeah. buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and, and, and I'm just like, dude, this is going to be a close fight. I remember John going, I don't know. I don't know. They're not giving odds. They're not giving odds. And there's not a lot of footage on yeah, those t- guys. Typically, mm-hmm. when you don't see a fight with odds published, that means that it's the a, general it's a public is going to be a blow. And how much video did we find on Ugas? Fuck, no. man. Like six minutes total, probably. Really? And I'm, absolutely. And when we talked to Porter, I'm like, you know, man, it's, when you want to talk about amateur boxing, and they can go, okay, yeah, man, he's a title holder here, title holder there. Gold, medalist, any medal, bronze, silver, gold, right? You get to man, that's, man, that's, that's really impressive. Right after that, like, if you want to appear like you know you're talking about boxing, you just go, did you ever beat a Cuban? Because that's that's like yeah. a huge <laughs> benchmark in amateur you boxing. Cuban, yeah. You're Hell you're legit, yeah, bro! <laughs> you're legit. You okay. beat a Cuban. Worth, you're legit. Okay. Worth more than any title. Well, they got like two, three hundred fights. You know, yeah. they're amateur yeah, no, pros. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Like every weekend, three fights. Let's go. And, yeah, you know, and Ugas is like thirty-two years old, man. I mean, like he couldn't tell anybody, like, yeah, I'm twenty-five. You know, I mean, just, I mean, like he he doesn't have a lot of sand left in his hourglass. You know what I mean? And I was like thinking, like, you know, what could be next for him? I mean, he needed that win yesterday, and unfortunately, he, didn't he get tried, it. man. He I mean, but even though he didn't get it, I feel like his, his stock rose his, it, it, without a doubt. Uh-huh. He'll be back. We'll see him. I, I think the rest of the division, you know, you and I were texting last night, you know, and my text was, the rest of the division just went, oh, shit. Yeah. Yep. yep, that's the thing. Yep. They had, they knew nothing about him, and he came, and he almost stopped Porter. He almost pulled it off with Porter. I think it was uh, the left hook to the body. Dude, all the body shots, man. I mean, he was so effective with them. Counter fighting. Hey, Jonah, what did you think was the uh, was the uh, the counter to him stop uh, Porter? How did Porter stop those body shots? You mentioned it earlier. So early when I was watching the fight, and Porter's known for throwing a lot of body shots. Um, round one and two, I saw him throwing them, but I saw you guys dipping his elbow in and catching the body shot off yes. the elbow. Yes. I think Give Porter him. realized yes. he was going to break his hand He's if he went to break his body. Yes. hand, bro. Which <laughs> actually, which actually made me think a lot about you and about bare knuckle boxing. Mm-hmm. Because that's the kind of thing a really good boxer would do. Every single bare knuckle guy yep. has to know how to protect those hands. Yeah. Uh, you know, Porter got shut down to the body. Obviously, uh, it, he still it, won the fight. It, still did yeah. really well. But right. if Ugas was able to still go there, I think, I think, yeah, I think uh, Ugas would have won those last three yeah, rounds I think Ugas instead of just that last Ugas round. He would have yeah. won the last yeah. three. I think and he would have won a fight. Yeah. The reason he won the Porter one is because of the pace he kept up. He kept the tempo up. Otherwise. I believe Ugas would have won. Yeah, I think I think it comes down to the earlier rounds. I mean, like um, Bob Porter came out. He, he uh, I think he lost those for the first round. He was coming out with the power, but he was going Ugas, power shot. Ugas was very very clammed up. Mm-hmm. Well, here, 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 here we go. Here we go. You, you got a guy like, uh, like Sean Porter that is a friggin' bull, and all he does is, all right, Matador, hold out that cape. I'm gonna run at it, and eventually <laughs> I'm gonna touch you. Mm-hmm. Porter does that over and over and over mm-hmm. and over again. But instead of doing that, he knew he was fighting a technical boxer. He just stayed back and played counter. Like it was something that honestly I didn't expect, mm-hmm. but he had to do yeah. it. Yeah, Ugas even said too, like after the, the the fight was over, he's like, you know, the first couple. Or he actually said the first round that he stayed back and just wanted to like gauge 
gauge like how fast Porter's speed yes. was. See? I think he it was not one round, it was definitely two rounds. Right. I think that if like Arnold Adams, like I mean he says like, you know, he's gotta get punched a couple times first to sort of like, you know, put his foot <laughs> on the gas. And I think Ugas, man, like if he if he would have came out swinging, you know, at the opening bell and he probably would have got one out of those two rounds. He could have won that fight. Yeah. I think. I think the the fight was lost for him in the first two rounds. I think it was a real hard fight to judge too. Dude, it was, man. I watched it three different times, and it's like every single time, I'm like, Jesus, man. I mean, like it's so close, but it was enjoyable. It was yeah. really, really enjoyable. Mm-hmm. And I'll tell you one thing too about Sean Porter. Like a lot of people talk, like you know, Lomachenko, the best feat in mm-hmm. in boxing. I, 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 it's it's not even arguable. Okay, I'll tell you what. With Sean Porter, Porter's got that. No, 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 no. Sean pa- Sean Porter has got the fastest hips. In boxing, I'll go with that. he's got the fat. I mean, like when you watch him Dude, bounce he, like, back walks and forth, one way and then he goes it's, the it's other. Al- it's almost animated. <laughs> it's almost like it's it's like like he he just you know it's one position here and then he's right there and it's like like how'd you get from point A to point B? It's so fast. Like he just like strides with such quickness and like his angles too. Like he can't find an angles that like I'm like man, well, yeah, what, what are you doing with this man? Yeah, but the, I mean, the, pro- the problem with Porter is like like the problem going into this fight is if you're a bull running at a at the Matador over and over, when that Matador is a Cuban, he's not getting shook. Like I'll, he, I'll, that's that's a bad move. You can't do that. I'll, I'll tell you another thing too that it, I, and, and first off too, like I'm a huge Sean Porter fan. Like he's like one of my favorite boxers in in, in all of boxing to watch. And I'll tell you, man. Like with with Sean, I think his game plan wasn't executed right. I, I honestly, one thing I noticed he gave too, that twelfth round away. He did. He did. Another thing too, Ugas's chin was never tested. Hmm. It was never tested. I, I, if it was, it was a it, stiff jab, I want to say a, sti- like a stiff. I'm glad you said and stiff jab nine, because nine that's round. all he did was jab. That's all. He, like he was looking for power shots, never connected on him. But, like, Ugas's chin was never tested. I think he looked good. It, it really seemed like uh, all the right hands were coming from one side and all the left hands were coming from the other <laughs> side. It, yeah, it yeah. Was, Porter you know, was nothing but jabs, and Ugas got, kept firing that yeah. right hand. So one, one question I like to ask a lot of <laughs> fighters about a fight that they've just watched. Mm-hmm. I'm going to ask you this for both guys. After a round that he lost, because each of them lost a couple rounds, how right. would you have coached Porter to not go out and lose another round, and how would you have coached Ugas? Ooh. What it depends on what happened in that round that made him lose the round. Yeah. Or are they not yeah, active? We're talking to a guy that's cornered by Lloyd Carter. <laughs> so I'm really? assuming there's a lot of four Lloyd, Lloyd, words. Lloyd's yeah. in your corner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Lloyd's, Lloyd's, Lloyd's a good dude, man. That's my, that's my bro. He's, like. he's a scrappy dude, yeah. man. He's like, <laughs> he's, I'm serious. Yeah. Like the one guy you never want to get into a like a bar fight with is Lloyd Carter. Yeah, he, he's okay, I gotta tell you another thing about Lloyd Carter, man. Let's just say the police are at your door. <laughs> Yonder Lloyd Carter. Carter's right there, guys. No, 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 no. Lloyd Carter. If the police are at your door. You want Lloyd Carter's sister responding to the police, telling them, you know, the information they need to hear because that chick, <laughs> man, I'd rather fight Lloyd than his sister. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Would you agree with that? His sister is there. Uh, there's some pit bulls. Yeah, no, dude, I... I a lot of broken furniture in that house. Oh, I'll bet. <laughs> I'll bet. <laughs> right. You guys are letting him off the hook for a really tough question. Oh, really? Well, so yeah, you yeah. got Porter. You want to go to a commercial break? <laughs> yeah. right, no commercial break here. <laughs> so you got Porter, left hand heavy, doing really well. Uh-huh. Uh, you got you guys, right hand, landing a lot of rights. Uh, how would you have coached either of them to potentially win that fight? I mean, like I said, it depends on... Like, what would you have said to Ugas? What, what, what would you have said to change? He just lost a round. Um, I think that's the best thing you could tell him. I, I think I'm going to call time out here. I don't think it's it's ever in any cornerman's best interest to tell a fighter, you're doing good. When they're not. When they're, especially yeah, when they're not. not. And I've seen that, and I've been like, what are you guys looking no, at? No, you, you, well, you've taken rounds off. When you fought Schumacher, you took a round I, off. I definitely did. When I fought, what was the reason behind it? I think it was your third round. Was it the third round you took off? Third or fourth round? Which one was I it? I want to say it was the fourth. Was it the fourth? I think it was the fourth round. Oh, yeah. no. In Bell Train, I took the third off, too. Yeah. And I came out in the fourth and, and finished them. But, no, it's... What was your reasoning at that moment? Like, when in I your take head? a round off, it's, uh... Because I feel like I'm doing too much. Okay. You don't want, you don't want to yeah, if gas I, out? Not even just so much gas out. I don't want to set myself up for something to happen down the line. Okay, all right. Now the rules. All right, here is one of my main complaints. All right, how many times have you cut your opponent in bare knuckle boxing? Everyone. 
Except Shoemaker. Yeah. Except Shoemaker, right. Except Shoemaker. So when you cut an opponent, you earn that cut. Right. All right, well, if that cut's bleeding, they'll stop the round and let the cut man work on it. Yep. Really? Stop. If he can get to stop bleeding, fight continue. I think it's like 30 seconds they yep. have or He's something like that. Seconds. Okay, but, but think about this. Like, when he fought Joey Beltran, was it going into the fourth round against Beltran? Or third round? Fourth round. Going into the fourth round, he comes out. Bing, 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 let's go. They didn't even really have an exchange yet. He goes, oh, no, yes, we did. Oh, it was, it was, it was one the cam- exchange. The camera doesn't show it. Was they, it? Were, they were showing a replay, um, but we came out, and as soon as it, bing, I caught him with a stiff jab. And I mean, it I opened st- back up. It opened, and it was squirting, and I was okay. <laughs> so, so, okay, the round just <laughs> starts. He opens, Arnold opens up a cut in Beltran again. Uh, Mergliota, who I think is a great referee, mm-hmm. stops it and says, hey, you know, let, let's look at this. Give him thirty seconds. So essentially, you don't really have a minute break. You got a minute thirty. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like, like a corner can look at a cut, going, "No, nah, man, we know we can stop this. Let's just." And he's gassing. We can give him an extra thirty seconds if we don't clean this Ooh. cut up. Like you can really like yeah. play the, like a slick corner will take advantage of that. Rule. Okay, so is it a uh, like an event issued corner, or you're bringing your corner well, man? It's, it's an event issue. It's an event issue. Cut, okay, man. so I mean, it's yeah. stitch there for every single yeah, fucking one. That's exactly who it was in this corner. It was yeah, stitch. they had stitch. And who did you have? Do you remember? I don't, because I I've never seen my cut man. Lloyd Carter's sister. I've never seen my cut man. You get Lloyd Carter. Zero times you've seen a cut man. I've never seen my cut man. You get Lloyd Carter's sister, dude. You're a good you're a good company, man. Yeah, good family. Good family. I like Lloyd a lot. Man. While we're Good talking team. about Lloyd, he's going to the tryouts uh, this weekend. Hey, you know, it's good for him. I mean, how, how old is he right him. now? Hmm? How old is Lloyd? You know, he's good. He's in Vegas, living life right now. How old is he? Thirty-three. Same age as me. Okay. See, a guy like Lloyd Carter. In all honesty, dude, he's fun to watch in MMA. Yeah. He's fought for me a bunch of times. I, I mean, he's I, a gamer. I, I like him personally. Yeah. Like, like, there's a personal relationship between he and I. He's a guy that's going to make. He he can make some noise. Oh, Doing bare knuckle boxing. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I wish it would have been around, like, when Lloyd was in his 20s. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, I used to scrap with him back then. Like, back, like, in the 2008, 2009. And he was yeah. a guy, like, that... I was in a classroom with, like, 15, 20 people. And, like, I'm like, please don't mention with fucking Lloyd. Please don't mention with fucking Lloyd. Please don't <laughs> no, no. Give me the new kid that just walked in <laughs> yeah. and wants to, <laughs> wants to earn his white belt. Like, yeah. Please, please, please. Mm-hmm. No, fuck, man. No. Lloyd was just, like, a, always... He's alpha. Uh, yeah. yeah. Dude, yeah, yeah, he yeah. don't give up, man. Like, he he stays, stays gun. tight. He stays tight, too. Yeah. 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 yeah, real good dude, man. Yeah, he was supposed to be in this lightweight tournament, but he uh, pull, messed his back up grappling. Um, Yo, he's had a few back issues. Yeah, and he had to pull out. But there yeah. were his first opponent. He was like, I didn't. After he found out he was out of the tournament, he was like, I didn't want to fight you the first round because um, I would have kicked your ass. Yeah, they, but they, <laughs> no, this is what they, this is what he told Lloyd. Like they know they did their research on Lloyd, and he's he's not a pushover. <laughs> Lloyd has issues in MMA when, when it comes to. Uh, the choke like like the guillotine but when it comes to stand up yeah he, yeah. he can stand in back that dick would smoke you man that's yeah. why he, he's he's thirsty what's, to get into the bare knuckle he, what, what, is, what is his walking around weight or I'm sorry what is he fighting at what, what weight is he fighting at he fight, he's a 35er he's gonna get down 35 he was gonna get down 35 for the tournament nah, come on man he can't but he walks come around away right, 70 come on man. but seen, it's, it's all him. here it's all in his stomach. If you see Lloyd That's right now, that's called carbs. You know, eating pizza every day. Yup, <laughs> pizza and beer every day. That's his diet. <laughs> so, yo, one of your teammates, Tom Shove, is mm-hmm. well fought. Mm-hmm. Um, the ninja, the ninja. That dude's tough. Yeah, he's yeah, he's yeah, cool, so man. so essentially, it was a rematch, and uh, mm-hmm. he was beating a guy the first time they fought. His name escapes me right now, and he got starched. He got starched because he just got uh, complacent. Caigas? No, not Caigas. What is he got complacent in the second time, man. It was a freaking war. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he's made for it too, man. Mm-hmm. This entire area, Northwest Indiana. That's, I, that's what I say. We're we're we we bang here. See, uh, John and I have talked about this several times. Like when you talked about the 135 pound MMA division back 2008, top five in the world. You had three guys within driving distance yep. of one another. You had Miguel Torres, mm-hmm. BB. BB, and Eddie Wineland, mm-hmm. all at different gyms in the same, in like, the same area. area. Yeah. Like, yeah. it's just Northwest Indiana is, is a hotbed, man. And that's where you're training at. You're at Team Cologne. That's correct. It's the wrestling. The wrestling. It, it. You know, I don't think there's any... 
I, you know what, man? Like, this might sound wrong in a little bit of a way, but I don't think there's, like, a, a, a coach in our area that cares more about their fighters than Steve Cologne. Well, see, Steve makes an impact, like, on the community, too. Um, I don't know if you but, feel but comfortable the, with the, me talking about it, but he's, there's a history there where he has seen the... Um, I think he's seen the outcome of somebody that that went down a road that they shouldn't have gone down. And because of that, he takes a lot of pride and care in his students in order to kind of correct that because he couldn't with somebody that he personally cares about. Who I I, I won't mention. Uh, That might be it, but I'm going to chime in on that. Um, Steve's past. Oh, dude, dude, he's a thug. Oh, yeah, no, yeah. Steve was I, that, very I, much I mean, involved I in nicely. the street life. Yeah. Yeah. I said it nicely, He man. was very much yeah. involved yeah. in the street life. Yeah, he, he's got people that he loves doing life in prison. Yeah. Like, like literally has love for them mm-hmm. that he'll never be, well, I mean, hopefully he'll see them one day. Yeah. But it's been 20 plus years since he's yeah. had a hug from just, them. I mean, just with Steve, man, I just like watching him. He's a like, of the he, community. He cares about his mm-hmm. athletes and his team mm-hmm. more than I've seen most people do. I, I've I've seen cornermen show up to fights that they weren't there for their entire training camp, and then you know showing up the day of the fight, be like, "Hey, dude, yep, you know, Sensei Rick is here. You know, you ready for me to teach you something before <laughs> fucking, you know?" <laughs> so, so, how did you hook up with Steve? Prison. No, 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 Steve ain't never been there. <laughs> Steve was uh, <laughs> gangbanging in uh, East Chicago. No, 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 Steve, no, no. Steve's good dude. No, um, fucking awesome guy. Victory Martial Arts. Okay, so you started at Victory and you saw Steve. Ricardo, yep. Um, That's really old school, bro. Yeah, yeah. And you know, Steve, this this was... Where where at? Which Victory? This was in Tinley. Straight down Harlem. That's where I was at. That's where I was at. That's where I didn't want to fight Floyd or Lloyd. (laughs) That's where I wanted to fight. That's when Steve would come over to Victory for the cross train. Yeah, Yeah. and it was at that point in time, that's when I met Steve. You just um, kind of kept in touch with him. I did, and I I like I liked his style, his the way he carried himself, you know. And I, I'm big on vibes, and I gravitated towards him. Yeah. Now, why there was no issue between me and Dion, but it's just yeah, you know, Steve's yeah. a street guy. Yeah, and, I mean, and, 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 and I'm like you're not yeah, exactly. I related to that. And, yeah, and that, that that brought us together. If if you look at our team, uh, we're like a bunch of misfits, mm-hmm. like. Oh, see, awesome. before you got there, there was this Brandon Del Prado. I was Mikey just going to say, Brandon, you know, like, I, I know it's a whole bunch of names Mikey out there. Welsh, I, Mikey Mikey like, I'm not trying to like go down this path where DeRay people like are listening to us and they don't even know what we're talking about. But essentially, there were a lot of pirates over there. Like yeah. it was mutiny. Yeah, Team Cologne was that team. Yeah, but but Steve like held it together, man. Yeah. Like you, mm-hmm. they they listened to him. Essentially, mm-hmm. like you had all these guys that had the potential of going to prison. But they listened to a guy that told them not to, and yeah. that was Steve. I mean, it's like, we're like dogs in a sense. Like, we're, on, we're loose dogs, we're rabbit dogs, or whatever the case is. But they get that one person that, like, takes care of them, brings them in, feeds them, that's, trains them, and then that's we're loyal. Steve, 100%. We're yeah. loyal okay, to them. now let's get back to you, Arnold. So, if, if they, uh, have you been contacted about the next event or no? I haven't heard nothing. Since I won this belt, I haven't heard anything. Dude, I will start talking shit for you <laughs> what about on, the, on the interwebs. I mean, not email, not text message. Have you not... reached out to them? Steve reached out to them? Well, Steve talks to them all the time. He, I, he's got show funny cards. I think I'm being put on the shelf right now. Have you, are you going to ask for a release? No, I'm, I'm not under contract. So I Why? Can't, Don't you have like a no-compete no clause? I can't compete for another bare-knuckle league for three years. But I can do MMA. But hey, they can't shelf you for three years. I don't know what the plan is. Maybe there, someone made a suggestion um, to do another tournament to find someone to fight me instead of just giving That's somebody. That's too long. Yeah, it's too me. long, man. That this especially tournament if you're only doing four or five events a year, you know, like you're looking at like seven, eight months. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I said yesterday, I was doing another um, interview, and I said I think what it is, they're going to make me chill out and wait. And wait for me to put on some serious weight and get out of shape, and then spring a fight on me. Yeah. Right? Well, you're also 33. True, but so they're they're trying to hope that you get old too. Well, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I'm not, I'm not. This, if I'm an opponent, no, no, no. It, I'm it, hoping you it, get it, old. It, it makes sense. Yeah, I, I mean, know, I, mean, I don't I'm have just much from left. a competitor. You know, from what they say, I don't have much left in me because of my age. But I haven't taken nowhere near as much damage as half the guys in in combat sports. I agree how, with how's, that. How's your health right now? Are you healthy? I'm I mean, healthy. I mean, like... I take care of myself. Like, okay, I mean, no injuries that you're getting no through? Injuries, okay, nothing. so they got no excuse to shelf them. I fought three times in four months, and 
the most I had was this scab from hitting the bag. Really? Okay. From the bag. Not even from, from, not even from the fight. Like, just the no, bag. No bruised really? knuckles, no, no tender wrists or anything. No. Really? Three Man, times I wonder, if, I, I wonder if we should play matchmaker for fucking David Feldman. Uh, I, 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 I guarantee you. If I, I did this for now, I'll, 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 I'll find somebody. Hey, this, this is what... He needs to fight in Europe. In all honesty, like, if you want a definitive... If you want a definitive actual world champion, mm-hmm. there's like some real tall dudes with the type of length that you got. I think you can beat them. I honestly think you can beat them. Uh, you know, Mickey Terrell, uh, Harry Miles, uh, Mark Goodbeer, or Godbeer. I, I honestly think you could beat those guys. But you're, I, I, the travel's difficult. Like Jimmy Sweeney's always like, Jimmy Sweeney is a you know, 170-pound guy. He beat Shoney Carter, mm-hmm. uh, who I cornered with. Um, when you're the champ, it's hard to travel. And, and it's like when you go to like Japan or you go to Europe, you're, the time difference is brutal. It really is. Like it's the six hour time difference, you don't think it's much, dude, it destroys your lungs. Mm-hmm. And not only that, like the food, the food over there is different. Yeah, yeah your body's got to adjust. Your body, you got to blow your lungs out. Like it's, it is not an easy trip. And when you're the champ, Dude, you shouldn't. You shouldn't have to do that. People yeah. should come to you in right. your comfort level, right. in your comfort That's zone. How I feel, yeah. and, and 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 Jimmy Sweeney should never go anywhere other than staying in Europe. That's my personal opinion. You mm-hmm. know, from from a person that's in a fight game. However, you, I hate to say it, man. I think for your legacy. You could get a lot more fights over there. You'd mm-hmm. probably be able to fight every other month. Probably would. And I think you could do it, dude. Mm-hmm. I really do. But you'd have to change your schedule. Like, you'd have to... Live mean, in England, probably. Oh, you'd have to do their time frame. Yep. You know? I mean... Oh, and work out when... Oh, yeah. yeah. You know? I mean, are you bouncing? Or what are you doing right now? I'm for, a bodyguard right now. So bodyguard? I just came off a six-week tour. Um, and I'm at home right now, relaxing. Trying bodyguard to... for celebrities or yeah. for businessmen? Celebrities. Okay. Yeah. We, we get R. Kelly? For... R. Kelly? No, not at all. Okay. 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 Mm. <laughs> I have nothing to do with that. <laughs> we go to grammar school basketball <laughs> games with R. Kelly. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. Um, no, just celebrities. I That's cool. I've a call for businessmen. But... Yo, man, you know the weird thing about like about businessmen, and, and I mean, this is way off topic, at a topic. any businessman that needs security is usually doing some shit yep. that you really don't want to be around. Yep. You know? Like, yeah, I do business, and I got people that want to actively hurt me right. out of the blue for no reason whatsoever. Would you mind standing in front of me while I sit down <laughs> trying mm-hmm. to, you know, dig in somebody else, you know? Yeah, it's weird, man. Yeah, I just found out uh, Mark Zuckerberg is getting some bodyguards. Well, he probably should. And I mean, that's a different level of... Uh, budget is $10 million. What? A year. Jesus, that's a that's so, a small so, army in a third so, world country. Yeah. Man. Who, who have you pissed off? Yeah, where you have to spend Tom time from MySpace, probably. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, Tom from MySpace gonna fuck him up. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Now I, I'd like to see you in Europe. I mean, and and like uh, if you're not being utilized here, I'd ask for a release, man. I mean, I got some. I have some regular boxing offers on the table. You yeah. Know. Do you got anything planned uh, up, upcoming or? The one that I know for sure is June fourteenth in Arkansas. I believe it's it's my pro debut, and it's it's nothing big. But yeah, I'm surprised these local guys don't use you. I know they're probably looking at your size and they're looking at your age and they're kind of doing the math. It's the age and my amateur background. Okay, well he ain't got one, but he's a pro. And I, but like this was the bare knuckle thing was like my plan was to use it as a backdoor entrance to the boxing world. I, I'll tell you what, dude. At the end of the month, uh, the guys in Europe, uh, through Fight TV, they're doing an event. I think it's like 2 o'clock our time. I suggest you watch it, man. Okay. It's 10 bucks. All right. Yeah, I, I buy every single one. Yeah, okay. yeah, I buy every single one. It's a different style of fighting. And you know, like the rules over there, too, is uh, instead of an 8 count, it's an 18 count. It, dude, it's old school. It's uh, Queensberry. It's a Queensberry rules is what they refer so to them. They won like seventy five rounds in a fight. No, no, no. It's, it's, it's three rounds, three five rounds, five rounds for title fights. But it's three rounds. But essentially, it's uh, man. Dude, I'm going to be real direct about this. Um, I don't think the level of competition in certain weight classes is very high 
in Europe. You know, but it's like when, when, you, when you talk about European boxers and professional boxing, they, they say the exact same thing. Really? You know, they're real stiff and they're straight up and down until a guy like Frank Bruno, who looks like he's just carved out of granite, comes along and like he just can't believe like anyone in the world could beat him. You know, but but essentially they're they're real stiff fighters. And like Jimmy Sweeney's the exception to the rule. Uh, there's a few, definitely a few others over there. Um, you know, names are escaping me right now, but uh, I think. I think that rule, the Queensberry rules, is, is a throwback rule, um, and it's essentially it's you know when you get that first initial shock because you know dude we're still developing like this this is a brand new sport right. you know I mean it's like the beginning of MMA and I think it's just to kind of give a guy an opportunity to understand what it's like to get hit I, I don't know uh, I, I I couldn't tell you <clears throat> the MMA fighters that are coming over to bare knuckle boxing I understand it. They're scrappy guys, you know, where they figure... They ain't technical, though. We got the four-ounce gloves. We're used to fighting almost bare knuckles. No. But, like, that tech, you have to have that boxing ability. You have to. And the boxers that are coming over, they're going to dominate. Once they learn they don't have to throw punches at 100 miles an hour or 100% with all their might, they're going to come over and they're going to dominate. Yeah. So a boxer will find more success in bare knuckles. Oh, yes. Are you kidding? Oh, well, yes. well, I just want to. I agree with it. I agree. Well, hundred percent. But yeah. I'll also say, like some of the technique, like, uh, yeah. all right, when you watch films from like the nineteen twenties, and like you see the guys with their hands upside down, and you know, but not, but they're gloved and they're kind of going around. Well, you can see here and go, yeah. Well, those guys are terrible as compared to today. And you know what? I mean. I, I think in terms of training, you know, and endurance and stuff like that, you can make that argument. However, they're actually transitioning from a bare knuckle style, which was perfect, and now they're trying to work in terms of a, a gloved style. Um, the bare knuckle style in the late 1800s at the higher levels actually was was just as good as today. Flat hand against the head, a lot of knockdowns. I mean, the 75 rules or 75 rounds. Essentially, whenever somebody got knocked down, it was that's the end of the round until they mm. couldn't continue. So you're just looking at like multiple concussions okay. <laughs> and brutality and hands. That and, makes sense. Yeah, a lot. It they would end the round at a knockdown. Rounds. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, dude, I'm a huge fan of, the, of, of that of pre World War II boxing, but. um I'd like to see you in Europe, man. Okay. You got to make that phone call without offending, but getting the point across like you can't keep me on the shelf. Because okay. you got to be able to make a living, too. You know what I mean? Like, what was the tournament prize? They advertised it. it was, uh, yeah, it was 50K. Okay. Hence on was. Damn. Yeah. They took, they took a one zero off or two zeros off. Uh, they took off ten k. Okay, well still. Was it a, well, okay, was it a fifty? I mean, what, it was it? supposed to be winner gets fifty k. Then it was switched to um a total grand prize of fifty k for the finals. Is so that 40 a contract for the, or forty for the winner, ten for the loser? Which was, and originally the original contract said fifty for the winner, fifteen for the loser. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> well, I didn't touch that one. <laughs> okay, so anyway. Yeah, um, you only ask and put it on blast, then you're not going to touch it after, yeah. after you dragged it out of them. <laughs> well, um, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm going to be. Uh, I considered the guys in Europe really good friends of mine. Like, we'll set it up, man. Like, really good friends. Like, we talked be- every day. Be the Dana Feldman guy. Nah, and so, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Dana and, uh, <laughs> when, when I went out to uh, Cancun, like I, we interviewed Dave Feldman like a, like a Tuesday, and I think we had it like on Wednesday. We put it up. Thursday, I'm in Cancun, caught a, like a $125 round trip plane ticket, and like I'm not passing on that. Man. Right. You know, especially Cologne's there, Chris Lytle's there. I'm getting mm-hmm. to see a bunch of guys. And while I was there, um, I got a giant fuck you. Uh, from one of the guys in Europe, and right. yeah, and you know what, man? Like, oh, because you're with. Well, 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 here we go. And, and you know, I, I had a guy Viet Nguyen. I mean, it's my old business partner. It's doing eight and a half years in jail right now. Um, <laughs> Viet Viet. That was yeah. my. That was my business partner. Yeah, I, I was the one that 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 took care of that problem. Oh. And um, in essence, like when people chose sides, I um. <sighs> I let them know what I thought about them. 
and I didn't. Um, I knew there was an issue between Feldman and the guys in Europe, and when there was uh, when, when there was that recent boxing promoter that like stiffed what like 150, 200 grand that's gonna be doing jail time. Yeah, the Polish guy, the local guy. Right, right. right. Um, I kind of got my wires crossed, and I and that's why I equated it to. And it wasn't, and you know, whatever business dealings they had, they had. You know, it has nothing to do with me. However, in terms of friendship, that there is a dividing line there. Mm -hmm. And you know, when when my old business partner and I went to our separate ways, and we let everybody know what we thought of Meaning each other, him eight and a half years, and you, you know, given him laughing at him in court and taking the elevator up with his family, <laughs> you know, trying to fight him in the elevator. Yeah, yeah. So. um you know, but at the end of the day, you know, I mean, it is what it is. Uh, I definitely owe the guys in Europe an apology. Um, I, I I think very highly of them. I, I think their biggest problem is this. From what I understand, it's this. Feldman and them had a business arrangement. It didn't work out. The guys in Europe, uh, Joe Brown and James Jim Freeman Dove, both really good guys. They both have said things about me publicly. And you know what, man? I, I get it. You know, I, I have no issue with them saying bad things about me because they considered me a friend and they felt that I betrayed them. And I, I got my wires crossed. Mm -hmm. And um, you, know, you don't take stuff like that personal. But at the end of the day, I think their biggest problem, and it's a huge one, is that they're really good guys. Like, they're legitimately good guys. And when you're a promoter, you can't be a good guy. Yeah. Like, you, you literally, you really can't be a good guy. Like, you can be good to individuals, but at the, the end of the overall? day, dude, you, you really can't. And it's... Yeah. You're hey, always burning a bridge. Well, okay. you've got 10 fights. you got 20 guys in the, going into the ring. Half of them are pissed at you by the end of the night because they got their ass kicked. <laughs> so now it's like if you can just salvage seventy percent of those relationships, you're doing yeah. you're doing phenomenal. Right. And I, I think they're legitimately decent human beings and I, I think that's their biggest problem. They gotta be bigger assholes. <laughs> and and I, I think I can teach him. Well, whatever 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 train they got hit by <laughs> by with Feldman assholeism. Well, uh, Feldman's a legit promoter. Like yeah. like uh, he, he the angles that I see him play as a promoter are somebody that's incredibly experienced. Yeah. And what I saw it's, in Cancun, it's um, in his family, it's in his blood, man. Yeah, with the game that was getting thrown at him by the local authorities and and the different bullshit that was uh, being spun on him. The way he handled it was. He's a vet. Okay, I, not not. I, well, do you consider me a vet? Uh, do you consider me a vet in terms of in terms of promoting? Yeah, I'm, I mean, I've been to sixteen countries, you know, because of MMA and boxing. I've been around twenty years. He's definitely got me beat. Okay, like I, I look at. I mean, my ego tells me sitting here going, "Yeah, I'm one of the best. I'm one of the best." Feldman's fucking good, dude. Okay. He's slick as shit. Mm -hmm. He knows what he's doing. He can mm -hmm. see angles. He knows what eyes to dot, what T's to cross. Um, I I think what he's what, doing is just going to work. He knows what. Eyes to cross, T's. Did I have eyes to dot and T's? Man, listen. No, 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 you said it right the first time. You said it right. Yo, but I, I'm talking in terms of promotion. I ain't talking about your contract, oh, oh, I mean, which is what you just said, talked about. Well, you're talking about promotion. Uh, I'm, as his heavyweight champ, I'm not promoted. Yeah, and that's a problem. You know, and I what, what I saw there, like, I, I, I think. Uh, I saw him telling people, I need a war, I need a war. And you know what? Like, he's in a position where he's getting a whole bunch of investor funding. You're not telling me he's making money. He's losing his ass right now. I think the first fight was was by far the best. The first card was by far that the best. That last card was really good, too, man. I didn't I didn't really get to see it. So it, it was good. It was, the first one well, was phenomenal. I mean, let's do a road trip to Biloxi in uh, I'll go, June. I'll go again. With I'll Arnold go. Adams. You I'll know, we, we dress him in one of Shoney Carter's old suits. <laughs> and just bring him down <laughs> there. The and, on <laughs> yeah. the just make sure people can pull him out in the crowd. <laughs> I, 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 the first time I saw Shoney Carter in real life at that time. In real the, life? In, in real life. Like, of course, I've seen him fight and stuff, whatever. I saw him at the Arnold's. I saw him at the Arnold's. He was uh, Arnold's grappling tournament. He was wearing a fur coat, yep. Jordans. He Middle had his UFC summer. belt. He was a lightweight champ at that time. <laughs> Middle of summer. Middle of summertime. <laughs> That's Shoney. And he competed in the in the grappling tournament. Won silver medal, still drunk from the night before. Yeah, oh, yeah. in yeah. a speedo. Yeah, yeah no, no, no. Shoney's a legend. Yeah, 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 right yeah, you know, crazy, but, like, crazy you, close. You were yeah. saying you're not being promoted and stuff like that. I. We mentioned you. I mean, I sent you the link to the podcast. You heard it. Mm -hmm. well, we, you know, well, we mentioned. Well, I specifically mentioned your name. What was your opinion of it? Tell the 
truth. I mean, what the fuck? I mean, what I, if they ain't calling you? I, I mean, mean, but I, I mean, yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not getting. I'm not getting called. It, it rubs me the wrong way, like. But I feel like, or I, I, I put it in perspective. I wasn't supposed to be the champ. Well, you know what, Arnold? I, I'm going to be real upfront with you. Mm-hmm. When you look at your MMA record, I'll tell you this to your Seven face. Seven and ten. You ain't supposed to be the champ. Facts. I'll give you that. A hundred percent. I'll give you that all day. And on John. Pa- on paper. John, when you and I, before this podcast even exists, you and I are talking about bare knuckle boxing. And you're like, eh, yeah, I don't care. I, I don't give care. A I don't give a shit. And, and I fact, said, and- hey, but the one name I mentioned. <laughs> Is sitting across from you right now. <laughs> he used to tell me about bare knuckle boxing. I used to be like, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. And then I put these, used to put the phone down, <laughs> pour myself a cup of coffee, come yeah. back, pick up the phone, be like, uh huh, uh huh, uh huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> but I, I talked about you. I go, man, dude, the, the, the dark horse. I go, I think he's gonna walk through that tournament. Mm-hmm. No, dude, your hands are I too know, big. Yeah, I, I researched every part. Nah, but you stay small, bro. You I stay do. small. I like, do. and you lower your level. Like your movements at your changes. knees and your hips. It is, and I was Frank's sparring partner, and that's one thing he pointed out. He's like, okay, hey, he's bending at his knees and his hips, and yeah, I, your I'm knees missing and your hips. him. I'm not, and I tell you who does that? Jimmy Sweeney in Europe. Mm-hmm. Like, you've got a European style, man, mm-hmm. but your athleticism is not, mm-hmm. it's not commonly found, mm-hmm. not in the heavyweight division, including nice. pro. Mm-hmm. And I'm a natural heavyweight. Yeah. I'm a nat- like, I really didn't get to the heavyweight division probably until 2000 and. Eight. Matter of fact, when I started fighting, that's when I really put on all that weight. Growing up, I was never no more than 235. <clears throat> and I didn't get there until I was 20, 21. I, I, you got on the Lloyd Carter diet? You can say Just that. Pizza yeah. and beer? <laughs> pizza and beer and, and <laughs> guy rolls and awesome fries, dude. cheese fries. You know. <laughs> Chicago, Chicago food, normal Chicago oh, food. It's yeah. hard, man. It, it's, it, it's it is. Tough. Yeah, it's I was tough. in Vegas for two years. Oh, yeah. Well, you travel quite a bit, man. So, when he fought for me a couple of years ago, uh, Hammond Six Center, maybe like four years ago, I think. I don't know. I remember in, what, 19 now? Yeah, it's probably about five. Four or five years ago? Four or five years ago, yeah. This dude brought a crowd, man. Oh, shit. They, I haven't, it had been some years since I fought here. So, uh, these local promoters, <sighs> you know, I, I try not to overstep my bounds because, mm-hmm. it's, you know, as a promoter, it's, it's just, it's not the right thing to do, especially if you've got a coach, you've got a trainer. Right. You know, as a promoter, I, you know, I'm not a manager. I hate managing guys. It's not anything I'd want to do. As a promoter, I would call a local, myself for you, I would call a local boxing promoter and I would tell him, I think you sold 115 tickets for it was, me. It was about that. And that, okay. doesn't, that doesn't include the walk ups that I had. They didn't even include the walk ups. Right? No, 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 no. This dude, people like him. Like, they legitimately like him. And um, I don't know why they're not taking advantage of that. I, 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 <laughs> maybe you're too nice, dude. I honestly think that's what it nice. is. And like, last week I was like, maybe I just be go back, just be an asshole. There you go. Like, I, dude, like, I hate to say like, it. Every, like, my mom, she's called me things. an asshole for years. She's called me an asshole. But, like, <laughs> this is my business, so I, I try to be, you know, humble yeah. and, and respectful. But now... I, I gotta start talking. You might have to cut a couple promos. Yeah, I'm WWF style, oh. man. Hey, hey don't no, worry. Like with the shiny car suit, right we'll put a parrot it, on his shoulder. It's about to get real, real soon. Who, who's in the heavyweight division that can be matched up with this guy? Do what they keep. <sighs> All right. Well, here, here we're talk- we're airing complaints, right? I mean, this is a brand new sport, mm-hmm. and we're talking about like uh, different avenues of thought. Yeah. And my avenues of thought are the guys in Europe. Mm-hmm. They bring a lot. They they at times they hate Americans, you know. But you really? But, yeah, they do. No, no. But, but they, they do. But they bring a lot of Americans over there. So, it, but the Americans that they bring over there do a really good job. They put on a good show. You know, they're cordial. They're nice and stuff like that. But then when they come here, Feldman picks them up, and it's like I can see the guys in Europe being pissed off, going, "Well, they're not loyal. They're not loyal," and I don't think they're looking at it properly. Like as a promoter. If I'm innovating, you're moving forward. When you're copying, you're just kind of waiting for the next move to make. The guys in Europe are absolutely innovating, and Feldman is 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 tending to copy their moves. Feldman needs to start innovate. Like he's doing real good job max making, so I'm not I'm not gonna sit there and, and fault him on that. The fights are absolutely exciting. And and that's what he's gonna have to rely on. But he's also gonna have to start innovating. Like if I have to point a fault, it's you got to stop copying what they're doing in Europe. You got to let Europe be Europe, and you got to be you, you, and let them do them, and you got to do you. And he's not doing that. When did Europe start the uh, 
actual bare knuckle. Because for the longest, they had the padding. They had boxing wraps over their knuckles. Well, they, they they would use boxing wraps. There's a woman over there. Oh, God. I'm going to edit, dude. We're, we're going to edit this, and we're going to put her name in. Um, I go over with Shoney. Shoney Carter makes a post, an innocuous post. Anybody know anything about bare-knuckle boxing? You know, I got a fight coming up. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, well, one, I know Shoney. It's my guy. Mm-hmm. But two, like, fuck. Like, you should see my, my, my hard book library of bare-knuckle boxing biographies. Like, it's it's just, I study it. And uh, I hooked up with Shoney. He was very hard-headed initially. I kept saying, no, nah, dude, stop, stop, stop. Like, the first three sessions, like, I was about to quit. I'm just like, man, this dude didn't want to listen. And I know he knows because Shoney's incredibly intelligent. When someone's got 150 fights... There's really not much you can tell him. Mm-hmm. Like, there, there really isn't, mm-hmm. you know? Just let him go. Let him you got to let him go. But eventually, Shoney kind of came around, and, and, like, his fight IQ is... the one Shoney's, Shoney's fight IQ is incredibly high. And when it's... And, and it's like, it kind of fools you, but his shape usually kind of carries him in his win. But his fight IQ is so friggin' high that he doesn't like to listen until he respects you. And then when he respects you, he gets it. And Shoney Carter uh, brought us over there, and they're like, yeah, well, we got this woman that's going to wrap your hands, and, you know, the chauvinist came out and me going, yeah, some woman's going to wrap his hands, okay, yeah, cool, dude, you know, uh, well, I'm going to wrap Shoney's hands, you know, that's mm-hmm. good. And then I saw her wrap hands there, and I go, Shoney, I go, dude, it ain't happening, bro, you're, I, for me to even try to compete with what she's doing, it's just not going <laughs> down, bro. I go, you know, you need your hands. That's the best one. I, 16 countries for MMA and boxing. I have never seen a hand-wrapping job like this woman in, in Europe. And I'm going to get her name, and we're going to put it here. And um, they essentially left the knuckles bare. It was all underground until... Uh, and so Joe Brown, who is a very, very successful businessman, that's fronting all of this on his own. So, like, you've got the guy that's in charge of it that's also the money guy. You know, it's different when you're Feldman and you got somebody backing you because it's not your money. You know, there's a little more pressure when it is your money to kind of be a success. So I understand yeah. the pressure there. But he was the one with enough balls to bring it forward. And it was always underground. And Jim Freeman Dove, who is the matchmaker over there, that also... Um, you know, I think he's, he's, he's got a minority share in a company, a uh, former pro football player, uh, soccer player. Um, <laughs> he was the referee in a lot of these underground uh, th- these underground matches that were in hay barrels and stuff like that. Yeah, no, it's super interesting. Like, the amount of respect that the gypsies give them, the, these gypsies don't fucking respect anybody. And the amount of respect that they're giving them, we're good. The amount of respect that they give them is, is, is astounding. Because when you're talking... Let's talk about our people, man. White trash. If I'm going to go into a fucking trailer park, let's just say Diamond, Illinois, <laughs> and I'm like, come on, guys, gather around. All right. I know you guys were just come drinking on, last Carney. night. You guys have been smoking 10 packs of cigarettes. I got a game plan for everyone. These people were just going to tell me to go fuck myself. Yeah. You know, but, but these gypsies, listen to them, man. Dude, they're fucking rough, man. Like, they're... They're legit scumbags, you know, some of them. <laughs> you know, I'm not some. I said some of them. Like, yeah, you, you don't grow up with tattoos all over your neck and face and shit like that. And, you know, you don't have some baggage there. You yeah. know, like, like, you know, some guys do. I'm not going right. to say everybody. Right. But my people, you know, you got, you know, it's, <laughs> you know I, I can only tell them talk about white people. They're my guys. But, you know, you know there, there's some baggage there. Yeah. And uh, these gypsies, they're... Uh, they're legit. They're legit, and they respect them. And for anybody to come along and get the respect of that community, I think it would be, you've got to be very special, and they've somehow done it. And maintain their integrity. Mm-hmm. You know, they're nice guys. So, I, I don't know, I'd like to see you over there, man. I, they're not talking to me right now. They're pissed off at me. He, I think he's got to get one more in the States before he goes. I know. I, I know. Somebody from over, overseas uh, reached out to me about me being a bare knuckle champion versus their champion. The funny thing about it, their champion lives in Kansas. What? See, dude, here, here's the problem, man. And I'm just going to be upfront with you. If you're not flying people in internationally for your event, you're not an international event. So, well, I mean, if they're saying from Kansas, I get that. I mean, it's just like an underground thing here 
No, or no, is no, this no, in no. Europe? This was, this was, I believe, was the BKB. Somebody from BKB reached out Wait a minute, him. are you talking about Thompson, the guy that fought uh, Alexander Emilianko? He's not from Kansas, he's from Atlanta. Black guy? Black dude, hell yeah. Tattoos? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, no, dude, he's not the champion. He fought mm. Josh Burns over there. Josh Burns is from... Uh, Josh Burns is from Detroit, and Josh has got a, several fights in BKB. He's 39, Bellator vet, real tough guy. He'll definitely be listening to this podcast. Very okay. personal friend of mine. Okay. And um, he's not the champ. He was supposed to fight their champ, but something happened. But no, no, no. He, he's definitely not the champ over there, but definitely a stud. I'll tell you this right now. It's a good fight. It's a hard fight. You definitely win that fight, but it's a hard one. Uh, you two would definitely fare well over in Europe. Um, but he ain't got the belt, bro. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's the bottom line. Right. I mean, I can sit here and go, oh, he's good. He's, 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 he's. Dude, he ain't got two fucking belts around each shoulder, and that's it. I mean... It, but who does? That's, that's <laughs> it! <laughs> you know, I mean, I'm not trying to sit here and... You know, give me a goddamn megaphone. You know, I, you know what I mean? But I, I'm just telling you, like, like if you want to talk about fighting, you know, Mickey Terrell, you want to talk about... Even Josh Burns was here, Harry Miles, you know, Mark... Good beer, who I've dropped those names three different times on this podcast. Unless you got a strap from the United States, it ain't legit. Mm. That's it. Mm. I don't give a shit what you say, man. You can sit here. Okay, man, I'll listen, I guess. All right, all right. You done? Okay, it ain't legit. Don't give a fuck. <laughs> and the only organization over in Europe that's doing it is them. Like, yeah. there's several other organizations over there that do bare knuckle boxing, including. Like uh, you know, with with with, with the uh, with the hay barrels, the hay barrels still, and I I talk to them on Facebook. Like I, I'm friends with the promoters on Facebook, and I respect what they're doing, but they're not doing what what what, what, what you know Joe Smith and and Jim Freeman Dove. They're not they're not doing it, and and I, I what they're doing over there is special. I believe they're the leader right now. Uh, in terms of bare knuckle boxing, I think Feldman's got to start innovating and doing things on his own. He's doing it though. I mean, he is. He, he is. is. Well, I mean, look what he just did. He just got. Uh, uh, come on, uh, just Pauly. He just got Pauly. I mean, he's getting names. Rumble Johnson. Rumble Johnson. But he's Rumble Johnson's just he's, like yeah, fighter he's, just, yeah, he's like an ambassador, right? Yeah. yeah. Man, I, I when, when I hear stuff like that, I was like, excited though when yeah, they first announced it. It's like, a cute. Rumble Johnson signs with bare knuckle. I was like, okay, now we now we got some action. Now then we he's got like, somebody. That'd be, a good yeah. payday. That'd be a good payday for you. I think you win that fight too, bro. Of course I would. <laughs> can, can Johnson make heavyweight though? Yeah, right, right. He's the guy that failed at 170. Okay, well, we're bumping you up. Then he fails at 85. All right, well, guess what? You're fighting 205 now, dude. You know? <laughs> it did well. Yeah, no, he did. You know, yeah, I mean, but when you're making press releases like that, hey, fighter relations, this is your thing. Like, what does that mean? Like, what does that mean? I mean, what does it pay? I mean, are you just doing like stock options? What are we doing here? You know, like, I. Like, like as, as, as on the business side of the sport, okay, you know, you're putting it out there, you're you're kind of, is this just to get investors coming forward, right. you know? And, and I'm not trying to, like, shit on anybody here. I'm just no. saying, like, as a fan of the sport, um, I, I love what Feldman's doing, you know? I'll absolutely be at his next event live. We should do it. We're 100% gonna, I'll be there. Let's go to Biloxi. 100%. 100%. 100%. Man, Biloxi, it's like... Arnold, we're going to be wearing Vegas your T-shirt, bro. Yeah, there it is. We're going to be wearing Arnold Adams T-shirts, man, yeah, which I don't think you've got, do you? I don't have any. We'll have no, Shawnee Carter design, man. We're going to have time Sharpies time and white T-shirts, <laughs> and we're going to make our own. <laughs> So, hey, so pro boxing is that what your is it was that what your motivation behind that's, this is? That's what it was. I wanted to for the last five years. I've been trying, but it's it's a political mess. I'll tell you this right now, man. My word of yours, I, I believe I don't have any contact information in regards to the local pro boxing promoters here. I believe they'll take my phone call, though. I mean, I've been around 20 years. I guarantee they've heard my name. You've got a name. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I certainly know their name. I have to assume they've heard mine once or twice. Um, they'll definitely take my phone call, and a hundred percent, I'd make that, I'd make that call for you. But we got to wrap this up, dude. Okay. So, any closing thoughts? Um, anybody you want to call out? <laughs> so, so, everybody. There's, there's something we touched Conor on. McGregor. We touched on real quick. I just want to ask you before we go, uh, Matt. You can sanction a fight anywhere you want. The sanction that's not even a thing. You, you get to pick anywhere in the world. Where would you like to fight? Anywhere. Anywhere oh, Hammond like, Civic Center. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, 
Poughkeepsie. <laughs> I want to go King Sasha Zaire. Really? Yes. Hell no, dude. dude yes. What? Yes. Why? 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 Yes. Why there, why? man? Go ahead. Why? Say. I got to take my name back to where it originated from, and mm-hmm. and, and and who else fought no, there? Mr. Muhammad Ali. Mr. On, Ali, yes. brother. I need to go back and. And relive that moment in my own. I'm sure the sanctioning wouldn't be that difficult. I mean, <laughs> so if you want to get hopped up on PEDs, <laughs> yeah. I don't think anybody's making you piss. You know, I, I, I don't know if the vaccinations are going to set off the, yeah. the drug <laughs> tests. <or whatever>. <laughs> <laughs> you know, bullshit <laughs> aside, man, with, with comments like that, like I can sit here and say, oh, you know, man, I really respect your boxing style. You know, you're doing really good. You're making a name for yourself. When you start throwing stuff around like that, man, you're getting like a foundation of respect by guys that understand and love the sports and love the sport because what you're saying is true, man. Uh, that's the first time I've been asked that question. Man. And legitimately, like I was hoping that's what you would say. <laughs> like, that was in my that's head. the only answer. <laughs> Set up and serve. Right? Yeah. That's the only I got that answer. Name. I gotta go. It doesn't make sense to do anything else. Hell no, man. So it's not the Hammond Civic Center. No, 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 no. Damn, damn. now why I do love, you know, the Civic Center. Dude, that place is just a sweat box. Dude, we gotta go. We gotta yeah. go. We gotta yeah. get out of here. You talked too much, Mike. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did talk. Arnold much. Adams, thank, thank you very you. much for Absolute jumping on. Pleasure. Man. I mean, it was thank awesome. You. It was good, yeah. just you know, picking your brain, talking about Mickey Mouse bullshit. But <laughs> it was fucking awesome. No, no, wait. I guarantee this will be our most listened to podcast. We're gonna have to do this again. Hell yeah! Yeah, yeah this was a lot of fun. Hell yes, we will. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, when we, you know, I tell you another thing is maybe. We watched the bare knuckle. At the end of the month, we got the guys in Europe fighting. Maybe okay. we throw it on 2 p.m. on a Saturday. Maybe yeah. we do a... A little fight cor- in corner. In your corner. In your corner fight yeah. corner. Watching the guys yeah, in that's, Europe. That, that's what we've been talking yeah. about. In, what? In, yeah. we, wait, what, what, what? Wait, what, is, what is this? <laughs> well, what, what we've been discussing internally is sort of like taking the podcast in another route mm-hmm. and doing a couple episodes where we'll sit here and put the, uh, a fight on mm-hmm. and just do the commentary for oh. it and then publish it. Okay. And bullshit about other stuff, too. Yeah. You right, know? right, 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 right. I got you. you know, yeah. So yeah. I think that'd be pretty cool. You yeah. know what I mean? So 2 p.m. on a Saturday? I'll tell you what, I'll cook, man. Is, no, you know what? I actually, I got something to do now, so I, <laughs> I'll, I'll pass. You guys can have fun. <laughs> All right, I'll tell you what. I'll get that. We'll try, to do, we'll, we'll try and line it up for the guys in your That's room. cool. That's All awesome, right. man. All right, guys. All right, brother. Take care. Thank you. All right, thank you. All right, peace.